India's space agency has just launched a rocket that will attempt to land a robotic rover on the moon. The Chandrayaan-3 mission aims to touch down on the moon's largely unexplored South Pole. The rocket launched in the last hour from India's space center on Sriharikota Island on India's east coast. It will now travel for almost a month to the moon. And if it succeeds to land, India will become only the fourth country to put a craft on the moon. Several earlier missions have ended in failure. One objective is to explore the moon's polar regions for ice, which could potentially supply a future space station with water. Now, DW's Sushmita Ramakrishnan joins me now here in uh, the studio uh, for more on this. Uh, how much of a moment is this? How big a moment is this for India's space industry? I think it's quite really, really big because uh, India has been trying to be a forerunner in uh, the space contest for a very long time. And Chandrayaan will put it right in the center of it because many lunar missions have failed uh, from global space agencies in recent years. So if Chandrayaan's lander actually makes it to the moon, it's a big moment for humankind. <laughs> So we will talk a bit more uh, about this with you, but first let's have a look at the details of this mission. The Chandrayaan-3 will blast into space on an Indian Mark III rocket. Chandrayaan means moon vehicle in Sanskrit and Hindi. The program is seen as a symbol of India's growing geopolitical ambitions. It's had success and failure. It was 2008 when Indian scientists sent the Chandrayaan-1 probe into space and towards Earth's satellite. It was successfully inserted into orbit around the moon and sent back data for nearly a year. The orbiter also intentionally crashed a probe onto the surface. That helped provide groundbreaking proof of the presence of water there. It also gave India the confidence that one can do this, to put a satellite in orbit around the moon and then from very nearby, 100 kilometers, study the surface of the moon uh, and, and look at um, not just things on the surface, but underneath the surface. The second Chandrayaan mission launched in 2019, intending to take the next step. The idea was not to crash a probe on the moon, but rather touch down in a controlled way, a soft landing a feat that until then had only been successfully carried out by the U.S., the Soviet Union, and China. The mission's orbiter worked as planned, but the lander with the rover hit the surface much too fast, cutting off communications, leaving it damaged beyond repair. An emotional setback for the Indian Space Agency, its chairman, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, and the country as a whole. But the failure didn't kill the program. Arch. Today, our wish to touch the moon, our wish to embrace the moon, has only grown stronger. Now India is trying again. The Chandrayaan-3 is planning to soft land on the lunar surface. This time, there will be no orbiter, just a propulsion system, lander, and rover. Like its predecessor, the mission is aiming for the moon's south pole. A lot is on the line for India's space agency. It's very important for ISRO for many reasons. Uh, it is not just a, a mission to the moon. It is a mission to test many technologies. It is uh, um, important because India is destined to become a huge player on the global stage right now. Uh, not just because India can produce this technology in an economic fashion, but also uh, it's becoming a formidable competitor in the commercial space market. If everything goes as planned this time around, the Chandrayaan-3's lander should touch down on the 23rd or 24th of August. Everyone back in India will be hoping for a soft landing. And so are we here in the studio, Sushmita Ramakrishnan from DW Sciences, uh, still with me. Sushmita, it, the, so the rocket is supposed to land uh, in, what, two weeks? No. Longer, 40 days. Uh, yeah, 40, 40 days. 40 days. Uh, what are the chances uh, of it actually touching down successfully? 
What we are aiming for is a soft landing. It's not just about being there, but doing it gently and gracefully. Mm -hmm. What happened with Chandrayaan-2 is uh, the, the predecessor mm -hmm. to the current uh, satellite. It crashed just moments before it was supposed to touch down and it lost signal and we don't know what happened. Uh, but this time, uh, scientists have managed to bulk up the system. It's about, uh, the current Chandrayaan is about 300 kilograms heavier than mm -hmm. uh, uh, the previous systems and this 300 kilograms has gone into building safeguards, extra fuel, uh, more shock absorption capacity, better sensors. Uh, this is how they've built it. Mm. So tell us more about this rover. It's called Vikram. What's what's special about it? So it's named after the Indian space research father Vikram Sarabhai. Uh, so ISRO was kind of his brainchild and most of the rocket science in India comes from Vikram. And little Vikram, uh, the rover, uh, would uh, would send out the rover into uh, the moon's surface. But the lander, Vikram, itself will have like four different uh, testing capabilities. It's going to check for moon quakes. It's going to check the temperature of the soil. Uh, it's going to look out for water. And it's also going to leave out a reflector, mm -hmm. which we can passively test later by sending out pulses from Earth and getting it reflected. We know the moon's movement better with this reflector. So uh, this is one mission that has to go well. What, um, what are the future plans, India's future space plans? Uh, if this succeeds, if the landing goes as uh, planned on 23rd, 24th August, then India is also planning a mission with Japan in the future. It's called LUPEX. It's also a lunar mission. Uh, this project itself is an international collaboration with NASA and with ESA and so many other space agencies are contributing uh, in small ways to make this project happen. But what's more interesting is on the 26th or 27th of August, India is also planning to launch an Aditya mission, like how Chandra means moon, Aditya means sun. Uh, there will be a satellite sent out to look directly into the sun and observe it. So India is looking at the moon and the sun around the same time. For the country, how important is this? It's a huge moment, primarily because ISRO is not just a space agency that's uh, geared towards uh, commercial space uh, in the future, but it's a symbol of uh, curiosity. It's the scientific temperament embodied into one institution in India. Uh, as a child, all uh, all children like grow up looking at these rockets that one day, you know, we could be there. Mm -hmm. So You uh, wanted to work on that program. In <laughs> of course, like when I studied physics as well, ISRO is a great place for young uh, uh, people with scientific enthusiasm mm. in the country. Uh, there are a lot of outreach programs as well. Time to time there are budget shortages, but ISRO pushes through and has been the frontier of Indian science. Sushmita, thank you very much. Thank you.